Hello everyone, um, welcome to what is the start of filming about the SFR1 sound and speed controller from Bier. I've no idea how many of these videos I'm going to make and I'm just starting with this unit. It's a very advanced unit. Um, I'm sure you've seen or researched them online and have an idea of what they can and can't do. I'm just, on this video I'm just going to very quickly go through some of the pages in the manual and how they refer to the actual unit itself. Um, a lot of people ask what kind of voltage goes in, how do you connect, how many inputs can you have, what are all the wires for. Um, so I'm just going to go through a very few quick steps of those and then at some point we will actually go through installing it in my truck. Um, I'm going to be putting it into a Volvo FH16. My truck started life as a logger but it's now become a tractor unit so I shall be using it as a tractor unit but the sounds and functions are all the same. I'm also going to link it to my um, Servo Nort front and rear light kits which I've also done videos on on for the FH16 where you have the nice tick running lights on the front of the truck um, and you have the stepped indicators pulsing to the sides on the rear. You can check the other videos out and have a look. Right, just to get started, so when you get the unit it doesn't come with the manual. The manual is downloadable online, I believe it's on the DVD if you purchase a DVD. They need to purchase a DVD because it comes with the Sound Teacher software, the full licensed version. There is a demo version you can get off their website. Um, if you go to go down to their website, it's down at the bottom here. I'm sure you can look it up on Google. Uh, the demo version allows you to play with all the sounds, play with all the functions, listen to how the sounds work. There's a test mode on there where you can run through how the gear change would sound if you set the sound steps up for the actual gear change. The other thing it doesn't allow you to do is actually upload the functions to either via the USB or direct to the USB or via the USB training cable. Um, so by all means go and download the software, have a listen, have a listen to the sounds. Um, I think the market really is starting to need more units like this. The Tamiya unit is great. Uh, the O1 for the US trucks and the O3 if I'm right for the European trucks. But all trucks will then sound the same. All the functions are the same. All the light sequence is the same. This allows you to do um, so many more functions. We'll go through some of them. I'll read some of the ones through in the manual here and we'll go through. So. Let's just get started, minding me waffling. Um, so, I'll just put the unit to the side at the moment. So, let's just go through. So, let's just put my little manual set up here. So, just as a quick overview, um, you can certainly pause the video at this point and read the manual, download the manual. So, some of the key functions you have cruise control functions, you have different brake functions, i.e., handbrake, emergency brakes, so therefore, you can get like the screeching sound when you apply the brakes. Adjustable load regulation, adjustable mash inertia. So, basically, this means you could set it up where you have a control. And I believe, and I'm going to test this where I can set it up to a rotary control on the actual transmitter where you can increase the inertia. So, what this means is as you connect your trailer and if you've got a heavy load on the trailer, you can increase the mass inertia. Therefore, the, the truck will sound as if it's laboring, putting a large mass rather than just running at the same speed, whether you're putting no trailer or fully loaded trailer. Steering inertia again, this has with ankle limits. I'm guessing that means turning limits. I'm not sure what they refer to as ankle limits there. But steering inertia, that means you can have the steering operate nice and slowly. So a bit like you would if you were having dual rates or reduced control on a transmitter. Therefore, you get a more realistic steering than on a truck as where if someone's actually turning the steering wheel round to the next corner. As you probably know, some of the scale trucks you look and the servos are nice. I mean, we've all fitted high torque servers but they'll have a very high speed so you end up with very flicking wheels which is totally unrealistic and when you're driving that flicking can cause your truck to lurch from side to side so having steering inertia would help um, let's go over um, so the light functions can be activated deactivated automatically with sounds and movements so therefore you can set up a that when you uh, typical examples when you turn the wheels the indicators turn on 
uh, you can also suspend that you could also turn it on that when you have a switch applied and then the turns when you turn the wheels the indicators to come on so, so let's just go through the manual so the next part ah oh, that's all safety notes and where they are on Facebook YouTube tutorials. I haven't seen a lot of YouTube tutorials. They say there are them with English subtitles, but I haven't seen them. So, power supply voltage is 6 to 18 volts. Let me just make sure that's in shot. 6 to 18 volts. So that would cover most 7.2 uh, nickel metal hydrides, NICAD. Nobody really runs NICAD anymore, but somebody might still have one. Up to 18 volts. Um, the advantage of this is you can also, it caters for LiPo batteries. Uh, it also has a built-in eliminator circuit, or ba battery limiting circuit, if you might want to call that, where if the voltage drops below a certain point, you can get it to play a sound saying voltage has dropped too low. Um, so you could have that before the actual cut-off voltage for your LiPo, before you dangerously discharge your LiPo battery to the point where it can be difficult to recharge it. Um, you can also set to whether you what type of battery you have in the sound controller um, in the actual sound controller software when I say sound controller it's the sound teacher they call it but I think it really should be called configuration software application I don't know so current 30 amp continuous should cater for most 60 amp short-term bursts now I don't think most people have short-term bursts but there you go uh, BEC current so 3 amp continuous 5 amp for short term so if you are running uh, high torque servos which draw a lot of power and you have two of them running performing a large function you may need a 5 amp burst for your 3 amp continuous proportional six inputs um, supports ppm pcm 1000 to 2000 milliseconds what that refers to is your stick on your transmitter normally it sits at 1500 milliseconds to the left or to one side down if you like is down to a thousand up to 1500 the middle position the forward position will be 2000 milliseconds that is roughly what that refers to it also supports s bus up to 16 channels s bus i bus um some d some d3 up to 16 channels depending on what the type of transmitter you have is deferred to what terminology some use s bus some use i bus i think for tarba use this some d or some d3 i could be wrong i'm not i've got a for tarba with that kind of thing um you've got a nautic switch a multifunction switch multi-canal switch and ems don't know you have three servo outputs so i'll show you a quick diagram in a minute explaining what those are there's 16 switching outputs of a maximum 1.5 amp up to 3 amps. So what that refers to is you can have 16 outputs that will control light functions. So just as a note, and I'll show you in a moment, whatever voltage you put in to the supply voltage is what the voltage comes out of your 16 channels. So if you're running 7.2, you will get 7.2 out. So based on that, you will need to either install the correct resistor or to make sure your light units uh, accept that kind of voltage. Now, the units I have set accept up to 12 volts, so therefore I could run a 12 volt battery and I would get 12 volt out of my outputs going straight into my units, like into my lights, into my units. Um, so just bear that in mind. Now, when you, and I shall show you again in a second, when you connect a 7.2 volt battery, you get roughly 6 volts out. Of your servo outputs so that means that when you connect your receiver up to however you connect either through PEM PCM using the multiple inputs or using IBUS that is the voltage that will go to your receiver um, if I believe I'm correct we will we'll do a little check um, audio amplifier 20 watt amplifier so it's quite loud it will run between four and eight ohms now they do say you can run a higher ohmage um, speaker and your speaker will have written on the back what ohmage so the higher the ohmage the quieter the output so therefore four ohms will give you quite loud eight ohms will give you a little bit quieter but I think eight ohms is a good AP medium because by increasing by decreasing the volume you also increase the quality slightly and you might get more of a, a pleasant sound a smoother sound by using that kind of experiment try different things the volume setting is with an extra pot you can connect a hundred K ohm pot to two pins on the unit 
and by twisting the unit you can then control the volume so if you want a similar setup to the Tamiya has where it has a volume control and like a little pot behind that flap you can certainly make a panel that fits in that same aperture with a little 100k pot and an on off switch because it can support an on off switch as well and you may want to put a switch in there where you have um, certain light functions and in the instructions it shows you how you can wire up a switch to perform up to I think it's four or eight light functions via a switch so if you um, don't mind reaching into the model um, turning on the switch setting the volume and then maybe setting the switch to control certain lights which are run on all the time and you don't need to have them controlled by the actual transmitter you can configure a switch to do that uh, the micro SD support card supports from 1 to 32 gig the maximum length of any sound files is 180 minutes per gigabyte so based on how big your configuration is how many sound files you have for every gigabyte you're going to get 180 minutes so therefore if you've got a 32 gig card you're going to get 32 times 180 minutes so just to bear that in mind if you want to play large sound files if you want to make an ice cream truck um, or you want to play music or you can even set up a, I don't know, a trailer that plays music when it's doing a certain function bear that in mind that it's going to eat into your total storage that you have so the number of possible sounds is five running steps in gears up to inertia or 255 steps so 255 increments of sound so therefore the sound file will be increased or decreased up to 255 steps to give you that sound of acceleration Eight channel sounds between running and stepping gears. Um, there you put your number of sounds. Uh, please do excuse me if you can hear a large amount of rain. I'm actually in my shed and it's starting to chuck it down with rain. So if this video is too much too loud on the background sound, I may re-record it. Um, you have a turn on noise, a turn off noise, a starting noise, a stopping noise, idling noises, braking noises, reversing warning, uh, curved squeals. So you can have the, t the tires squeal as you turn. Flashing light sound, you can also set lights up to flash, pulse, different intervals. 30 additional sounds, i.e. via the prop channels. 8 random sounds, randomly generated, so you can enable this and it will play any of these 8 random sounds. Again, handy if you have an ice cream truck and you want 8 different melodies playing for when you have music. When you flick a switch, you'll get a random one. You get 30 sat tracks between there. The random sound generator between 1 and 999 adjustable. Additional ports. So there is an interface cable for port for an infrared diode and a light module which is the SMIR16-2. Oh, excuse me, sorry, that's down the bottom of the manual here. So this means you can set up the infrared module to go to this unit here to control trailer lights. So let's see what's on the next page. There are protection features, so like I said earlier, there is a short circuit protection for BEC. Um, there's a, if the motor's too high, a temperature warning, battery voltage, so it will monitor the, cu the current going through the light outputs. If it gets too high, it will switch all the lights off, it will switch the unit off. It will monitor the battery voltage coming in to the two inputs. And again, if it drops too low, it will see the player sound or switch the unit off. Um, and then you've just got the vehicle weight and dimension so just as a little thing that is how big it is um, it is actually reasonably quite small now it does have a heat sink on the back which you ideally need to give it some air um, I do wish they would have put this writing here on here so therefore you could have mounted the unit on its side and get to the micro SD card which is the little um, thing here which is not a push and release it's literally a pull and push unit so you do need to have reasonably small fingers or a pair of pliers without damaging it um, so the dimensions are on there so let's go over the page let me just check out this again for 13 minutes of this video so try not to drag it on too long so in the instructions it refers to each of these collections of connectors as X ports so that your X1A is plus your X1A minus your X1 motor plus and your x1 motor minus so this is all the x1 side here is the x2 here's the x21 here's the x22 these are when it refers to those there what it doesn't tell you is this is the x21 and this is the x22 now the diagram is almost suggesting it's this here but it's actually these two wires here um, and what these are is actually 
the servo inputs are pre-wired so the common inputs people would have are steering and throttle so you run this on your two channels here so if you only want to run the speed controller and the basic light functions like indicators and stuff like that you can just connect these two cables um, any other functions you wish to connect you connect here through ports three four five and six now six is for ibus or sbus uh, annoyingly it's also for the new bluetooth module so if you do decide you want to use bluetooth and run the very fancy app where you can actually drive your truck from your phone weird i know um, then you can use that but you can't use ibus and bluetooth because it uses the same sbus interface um, for referring this to the units here you can see that X9 here is the standby. So if you want to put a switch in to can switch the unit on and off, you can put a switch in. You can also set it so that the unit is automatically powered up as soon as the battery is connected. You do not have to fit the switch. Here is your speaker connector. So that's your X7 that's listed here. Here is X11, which is for the um, programming cable, which I have here. If you do get the programming cable, get the USB one. This is basically a serial to USB adapter, probably similar to a USB TTL adapter. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see on here, it's listed as orange, rot and brun, which is orange, red and brown. So this needs to connect that way around into there. And then you come, you need a micro, it's in the mini USB, sorry, not a micro mini USB, it could be right, micro mini. It's basically that type of USB cable with a USB A connector going to your computer so you can connect it up um, x10 is the sd card here uh, these are your two light outputs and we'll go through very quickly on here what they do so um, as it shows you here x1 and x2 are inputs for throttle and channel so therefore this one here is one so this is your throttle so you connect this to your throttle output of your receiver and this is your steering one. So you connect that to your steering channel. So whether you're using a two channel controller, three channel, four channel, six, eight, 10, 12, 16, 24, whichever one you're using, you connect those up there. Any additional inputs you connect through to here, like we said. So you have here proportional input three, four, five, and six. And as I say, six is preferred for IBUS. You then have your X3 and X4, which are these here. These are your two power output now the unit comes with a USB cable one lot and basically on here you have a 10 pin connector so pins 1 to 8 are your outputs and pins 9 and 10 on each connector are the common positive so you have two common positives and then it uses negative switching through channels 1 to 8 and that's repeated on channels um, 9 to 16 here so again the first eight cables are your outputs and pins 9 and 10 are your two positives so you have a positive so you could wire two wire a big thick cable maybe across two pins onto there put that to a nice little chop block or some sort of twist connector or screw down connector and then connect all your light positives to there and then your negatives you can then connect them to here so that is what that refers to here so let me just go through here so we went through loudspeaker volume pot and as I said it's a 100k pot wired across this connector here the x8 um, sorry there's your x8 is over here x8 is here so there's your volume control and your x9 is over here as it's shown on the diagram and that's where your um, standby switch goes so and again the x11 is for the two connector so as a very quick example we're getting towards the 20 minute video point on this video this is how the unit refers to in the diagram so you can see here that when we said about your um <coughs> excuse me your you have your motor connectors here so your power connectors here your motor connector here's your power on off optional so you can see it's literally a make break connector so you can do it with an on switch so it needs to be a held switch a, a make connection normally open to normally close switch i think that refers to um, there's your setup switch your speaker connector there is a negative and positive um, shouldn't really matter for an on ohms a mono speaker your usb training cable your micro sd card and your volume pots as it shows here that 
line through a resistor refers to variation. That's a variable pot up to 100k connected across those two pins. Um, you have your two inputs here. So first input, which is up here, this one. Up here is referring to this one here. So that's your throttle, <coughs> excuse me. And your second one here is your steering input. So those are your two inputs there. So as it shows you here, if you have a receiver and you have your channel three, four, five, and six, you can connect them to channels three, four, five, and six on here. So you can have um, four additional controls. Now, whether they are um, momentary switches, um, two position switches, three position switches, a variable pot, they all connect on here. So depending on how you program the outputs of your receiver is depending on what your inputs will do on here. You then have your outputs. So you have your output, your X5 here, is your output to your, the last one, is your output to your infrared diode. So that is to go to the infrared unit receiver for the trailer. You then have your steering servo connection and you have servos one and servo two. So you can use these to control maybe a lift mechanism for a trailer um, or a release mechanism where if you have a servo controlled latch, you can also use this because it's a servo output. If you have any servo controlled electronic switches, uh, you can get some electronic switches where they take a servo output and they perform a various functions, whether they perform a light function or a lift function or a control function. Also being a servo output, you can also send this off to a small, another electronic speed controller. So if you need a speed control, again, for your tail lift where it connects to a a um, spiral drive or a gear drive where you increase the speed or decrease the speed you could use that output here now you'd need to set that up to be a controlled output because um, obviously these are either full function left full function right or proportional function depending on how they're set up in the controller so just bear in mind you may have some limitations on what you want to do with those so you may need to connect those here in those servos direct to your receiver and not use one of these on here unless you have an eight channel you're obviously using channel one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and eight come direct off your receiver to additional units that you have that aren't part of this here. Um, so just getting on to your light outputs, your light outputs are here, as I say, it shows you out one to eight. So it doesn't indicate in here, but actually there is a little red here. And if I don't know if you can see, it's pointing here. Now that's actually suggesting that pins nine and 10 are your positives so these are your positives these are your resistors if you need resistors in line and this is your light emitting diode so a diode with arrows outwards means it's emitting light so it's a light emitting diode now this refers to uh, the color here red brown orange yellow green blue purple gray and white and black on here now that refers to and i'll grab it very quickly to the cable that comes with the unit and this is that cable here. So you can see here, it goes in that way around. So it refers to the brown, the sequence here. So that will plug into here. Now they come with one of these, but you don't get two. You can buy extras and they're not expensive. Um, the other thing you can use on here, as I found out, is you, if you have one of these little kits here, where you have pins you can make up for making the servo style connectors, these style connectors, you can actually make one of these up a 10 way and it will fit on there so you don't have to have the ribbon you don't go and have to buy a ribbon style because this is a clamp down thing you can use the one of these and pop it onto here or you could use four little individual ones so if you have light outputs where it uses a two pin version of this you could just connect those two pins uh, on there now obviously you need to get your positive from here and your negative from there so you could put take the pins out and put two pins in here and plug it in there for two lights so the left hand and your right hand indicator um, as an example and then run that to the rear of the truck just put that over there the other thing you can buy online if you shop around is you can buy um, lengths of this now this i got from banggood i believe i think it's five meters or three meters long and as you can see, it's basically the exact same color sequence as it's on here. So at this point here, it goes down to black. You can just literally tear the cable 
and pull apart. So you can pull two cables off, pull one cable off, take as long as you want. Run this as a small length to somewhere else. So just bear in mind you can get this. And this is multi-strand cable that's in here. So just be careful. You can get some that is a solid core. You need multi-strand, otherwise it's, it makes it very hard and not very flexible. So that is a basic diagram of what you can do in here. We'll just see what's on the last page. Um, again, connection of supply voltage, 6 to 18 volts. If the supply voltage is connected, the green LED will light up. Uh, connection of the motor, how to connect the motor, see various things. And also, if you are using, well, this is only for a um, brushed motor. If you're using an old brushed motor that has um, quite um, noisy, bu noisy bushes on it, so when the bushes are running and they make a lot of static noise, they can generate interference which can be heard through the speaker so therefore you need to put little capacitors so these 10 micro 10 nanofarad I think it is 10 farad and a 47 across the poles now some motors come with these pre-installed inside some don't so just be in mind you do need to have a bit of skill on electronics to get one of these units working um, so the connection of the proportional outputs as it said one and two must be connected to one must be connected to the throttle otherwise you can't get the electronic speed controller part to work and two must be connected to steering otherwise you don't get the steering functions as such as indicated like flashing when steering steering inertia and limitation um, transmission of steering signals to the light module so therefore you can say when receiving steering input do a certain thing um, and again we go through to the proportional channels again that's what they are now so as it says here number six is a free function assignment or used for sbus or smd smu sumd excuse me um so one for throttle two for steering three is for a free function or for a uk mfa or nautic switch now, these are certain switches for certain types of radios where you can actually have a bank of functions as a button on your transmitter and it goes through one cable and produce, produce, um, produce up to I think eight functions um, so there's a free function here or a Nautic switch two. so again you can make your own it shows you in here how to make one of these switches if you want to perform functions um, so you can get one switch to perform various functions into this one cable free assignment so again you can use that for any channel and then your six is a free assignment so again here your BEC receiver voltages unit has a BEC supply voltage of 5.6 volt and additional receiver battery voltage is not required you can use it and it basically gives you various warnings um, your switching outputs so you can use their ribbon cable or the AKL8 or the AK8W one of them has a little um, pins on it where you can push in different resistors depending on what out resistor output you need for either the type of resistor or the voltage um, just bear in mind there is a difference between 3 mil and 5 mil and also a difference between color so depending on the color of your resistor it can require a higher resistor um, I can't remember what process I think red are lower but blues and whites are higher now I could have that completely wrong so just in mind there's various websites out there that show you how to calculate voltages again all the switching outputs are negative poles we have that common positive as it shows here here white and black on both outputs are common positive and then these are your eight negative outputs um, we won't go through much more um, so they give you a brief guide on what kind of ohm resistors you need depending on what kind of voltage you're running and uh, they recommend you use a, a resistor um, per LED and don't double them up um, and actually wire them um, in line at each resistor rather than trying to cheat. Again you've got USB cable and your switch cable and then you've just got general remarks around always use cable with a core diameter of 1.5 minutes for connecting power always supply the motor with blah 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 unfortunately motors are often strong blah 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 so that goes through and then it goes through on setting up your LEDs and functions. So, just to bring this to an end, very quickly, I will get my unit here and connect it to a 7.2 volt nickel metal hydride, I believe this is, battery here. And now I've got my unit to power up 
as soon as the battery is connected. So there was a blue flashing initially from these little lights down here, and it's now flashing green. So if I get my multimeter and bring that into shot as well, if you ever get one of these multimeters, they're great because the voltage here measures AC or DC, regardless of what you don't need to remember which one you're measuring, you'll measure either or automatically sense and choose the correct one. And it also had the tone function. So as shown on here, we have brown is negative, red is positive, and orange is the signal. That's the sine wave signal here. I don't know if you can see that. So I have 7.2 volts going in here, which is going in here and here. If I measure the voltage coming out of the brown, now the common, the browns are normally all common and the positives are not all common, it's any of the signal. So I can measure this pin here and this pin here. And you can see that that's five point, oh, excuse me, 5.73, so just under six volts are coming out of there, even though coming into here, take it from here because we have 7.72 volts coming from the battery so just bear in mind that's how it comes out of there and if I measure on here again pins 9 and 10 are your positive so if I put that on here and I put that on here you can see we have 7.72 7.71 7 so the voltage that's coming out of here is coming directly into here and I believe it's wired internally that that positive is wired straight to here and the negative goes through the various control circuits. So just as an example, that whatever voltage comes in here is what's coming out of here. So you need to bear that in mind on when you're setting your resistors up. Um, I will bring the video to an end here. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed it and it was beneficial. We will move on to step two soon. Um, I'm not sure when I'm going to get time to do that. And we will go through and what I will do is I will set it up on the bench and I might even just put my little light units in and connect it up. And I'm going to be using iBus because I prefer to use iBus. I can get multiple channels without having to do lots of wiring. And we will go through and get things set up. So please like and subscribe and share the video amongst any Facebook groups you're on that are using these units or somebody's considering trying one of these. And um, hopefully I shall see you all again soon. And thank you very much for watching. Bye.